Do you have a middle schooler? Are you looking for a science curriculum that is beautiful, has living books and hands-on experiments? Then I have the curriculum for you. Hello and welcome back to Wholehearted Homemaking. My name is Heather. Today I want to share with you our favorite science curriculum. And I have shared in the past about the Form 2 or upper elementary version of this curriculum. It is Sabbath Mood Homeschool by... Um, Nicole, and now I can't think of Williams, Nicole Williams. <laughs> and today I want to share with you the middle school option. So this is form three for sixth through eighth grade. And um, we have used most of the guides. However, we did not use the technology and engineering or geology. Um, technology and engineering one is cost prohibitive for our particular family. And geology, we just didn't get around to yet. But today I wanted to share with you a little bit about how the scheduling works for middle school because it is slightly different than the upper elementary years and give you a walkthrough of some of the guides. So first things first, let's talk about the schedule. Now you do not have to do it this way. And Nicole shares on the blog and in each of the books that you do not have to follow the schedule this way, but it follows more of a Charlotte Mason pattern. And what would happen is you would cover these over two years. And so one year you would take the whole year to cover biology doing only one lesson a week of biology and then three days a week you would do your other science focus and then the next year you would spend one year doing botany and three day or one day each week for a whole year following botany and three days each week following your other science preferences so for my oldest for example she did botany one year and then in that same year she studied weather and astronomy and uh, physics so if that makes sense so you would do the biology the, for the or the botany for the whole year and then she would do a term of each of the others but you could just take one and do it for till you finish and then pick up another one you don't have to follow that schedule um, it worked well for us but it gives you four days of science which was a bit overwhelming and so that's why we did not quite get to all of the guides um, However, I wanted to share some of the things that we have learned. So in the botany, my daughter really struggled with this, especially in the winter months. Plants are really not her thing anyway, so that was part of the problem. But the botany guide um, has some experiments that were a little odd and required materials that we couldn't quite get to work right. Um, that may have been user error, so there's that. Biology was a little more informative. It's a good introduction to biology. Now, these are the curriculum guides. You use this guide with each of the lessons, which I'll show you here in a minute. And then you also have a living book that goes along with it. Um, and it's kind of your spine text. I'm trying to remember which goes with which. So first studies of plant life goes with this, and that is a chapter book. And then for biology is men microscopes and living things. Both of those books I would give to my kids to read even if we couldn't do these particular things. So if you can't do the lab work, don't wanna buy the curriculum, I do recommend you go check out Nicole's book list because her living books are wonderful. So we did biology, botany, weather, astronomy, and physics, which I don't have because we did that digitally. Um, but these guides, you can print them out yourself. That's an option or you can get the printed versions, which is a, a slightly more expensive option, but really it's, <laughs> it is um, just, just as good. I just liked having them in the books. So let's walk you through the astronomy because I think that's the one we did most recently. Now I'm concerned that there might be blood on this one. <laughs> no, um, so the astronomy one, she did all of these independently. Now my next kids who will be going through this, um, I have two, so they'll be doing it together. So they may do it independently. They may do it with my help. It just kind of depends on the lesson. Um, but you are always going to start out with your title page, of course. And then you have a Charlotte Mason quote. And you will have the introduction. And you can see this particular page on her website. So if you're curious, go look there. And it kind of outlines your spine text about the author. This particular um, one, I did not, 100% did not like the spine text but I didn't pre-read. And so because my reading was behind my oldest, I would not choose this particular book. I have not had that problem with any of their guides, um, except maybe the biology one we're doing right now. But the Davasobo um, planets, very pagan. Just, just gonna throw that out there. These are touted as Christian guides, but there's very little Christianity in them. Just, just not that that's bad. We live in a world that needs to do that. So I would recommend if you're going to use the particular this particular astronomy guide, 
to check out Institute for Creation Research. They have some wonderful supplemental books. I actually might have one of them here, but I can't find it. Um, and I will put those on the blog as well because it was very pagan. It was interesting, and since my daughter has done mythology, she could understand that because we talk about evolutionary things, she understood it, but it did not, throughout the guide, there was very little that supplemented the Christian perspective. And since we are of a young earth view, um, I did not appreciate that in a Christian curriculum. So, um, but yes, um, Institute for Creation Research has several, several books. And like I said, I will share that in the blog post. Um, so that's a little hindsight. There are links that she will talk about and then she talks about the schedule and then you have your QR code for your exams and you can use that and get free exam questions, which I very much appreciate. She also talks about current events and notebooking. I don't believe current events was in the first one. And then there's leisure reading. Charlotte Mason always had them read in the afternoons. My kids don't do that. It's okay. Then you have the supply list, which you can also view on her blog, um, on her website. You can get all the the um, supply lists for, sorry, something outside. And you can get all the supply lists for every single one of these. And what I've done is gone through and price checked everything to figure out, can we even afford to do that guide? at this time and because of cost we've had to switch around how we do certain things and so having the supply list ahead of time is very helpful um and then you jump into your lessons and as you see i have a lot of notes in here for my daughter because i kind of handed this to her i went through the teacher guide here and made notes and different um, things for her to do i highlight what she needs to put in her notebook I put questions for her to consider. I put notes like come narrate or talk to me about a specific subject. Um, like I said, had I pre-read the book, then I would have been able to better direct her in that. And so please pre-read. I'm, I'm going to die on my graves. <laughs> Say pre-read. <laughs> but um, it does have a lot of great activities. And there are some images throughout here. This particular guide goes into quite a bit. Um, there are always not always, but there are often these extensions that you can do, um, a lot of really unique videos, um, and I appreciate that. And um, let's see here, it tells you what to put on your notebook. Then let's see here, then three was the experiment. And so I tried to do some of the one experiments ahead of time if I could. Um, and I have my own, I kept my own nature, my own science notebook along with this study while she did it. I haven't done that for all of them but it did help me to understand a little better what she was doing. Um, and I, I recommend that. It's a great way. If you haven't if you haven't ever done the narrations thing yourself, I recommend you do that, whether it's with these guides or with some other book, um, because it opens your eyes to what your children are actually doing. But anyways, and so you can see this has a lot of writing because it is, there's a lot of activities for you to do in here. There are a lot of, um, what do you say? kind of to go along with book there's a lot of explanation of okay but this um because it isn't it is very secular and then you have just different activities and you see i put post-its in here about what she should do and um so that's the astronomy one and like i said i don't like the spine in this one so i probably picked up the wrong one to share but this is one that i really appreciate um the guide because it had a lot of things that i would not have thought of um some there was some music that i would not have known about there were many links it was very eye opening and then like the weather which is the next one we did um you can see with the astronomy and the weather i picked up my planning and a little bit more and took it more seriously before i was just handing them to my child and letting her do it and she went through it just fine and it, it really did work that way but however we both benefited more when i took the time to pre-read and plan and in the weather one i even started writing notes as you can see like to get materials ahead of time so i put out a couple lessons before so that way i had time to get it um but this follows the same pattern of just having a little bit of a blurb or kind of a connection and again that's where you if you're gonna find a christian tie-in that's where you will find it is in her writing here because almost none of the spines are christian um and then you have an activity and then it'll have your reading what to notebook and with the weather one you're keeping a weather log so you'll have that as well um and all of the guides kind of follow that same pattern of here's a little bit of a statement which if you're going to lead it as a lesson you can use as the adult and just share 
or you can hand it to your child and let them read it. Like I said, I hand it to my child. My child likes to do things independently, and so that has worked really well for her, but I did learn my lesson that I need to pre-read and know what is going on. So I hope that this has been a help and that it will encourage you to check out Nicole's Sabbath Mood Homeschool Science Guides. And if you have any questions, like I said, I have not done the geology or technology and engineering, but I have done all the others in the form three and four. And if you have any questions, let me know. I also will share a link below to my website where I will go in a little more detail about pros and cons and some changes that we made along the well, way. Have a blessed day and let us go forth and strive to serve the Lord and our families wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm.